right, welcome back to another episode of Cloth Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Brody. Uh, if this is your first time checking out the podcast, listening, even if you're watching on uh, YouTube, you may see a different setup. <laughs> I know most folks, y'all, are used to seeing um, me interview people in-house. But uh, before I introduce my guests, uh, which I'm excited to talk to, and I'm pretty sure if you guys seen this film hint, hint. <laughs> you'll probably know who, who's on the other side of the screen uh but before we do that i want to shout out uh our sponsor for today's episode we want to shout out the flyer agency uh ran by my man deontay tatum if you need any flyers graphics website design uh any animation anything logos whatever you need any physical or uh, artistic rep representation make sure you go ahead to the flyer agency dot com uh and he'll definitely hook you up there as well all right so let's we're gonna get right into it <laughs> um i don't have to, to talk too much about uh this guy i mean the man is named business L Lindsay. he's here <laughs> i appreciate you for coming on man <laughs> i appreciate you having me bro appreciate you man absolutely absolutely um, so before we, we talk about this film, because uh, before we started recording, for those who are just joining us, uh, I kind of showed him uh, a whole page of stuff I just wanted to talk to him about, and I wanted to make sure that I had enough time to do it. And he said, let's go. We, we can roll. We go. We into it. Let's do it. So before we talk about the film uh, Residue, uh, for those who haven't seen that film yet, please uh, make sure you go ahead and check out Residue. You definitely won't be disappointed. I learned a lot. Um, I can relate to this story, as I'm sure most, uh, you know, people that come from our type of background can relate to this, right, this right. story. So before we talk about the film, I kind of want to get to uh, to know you a little bit better, your background, and also for the listeners who, who may want to know a little bit more about you. So are you originally from D.C.? Yeah, born and raised. Born and raised, okay. Born and raised in D.C., okay. So for you, this was like nothing new to you. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> All right, so how did you get into acting? Like, have you, was, <laughs> that, was that always an aspiration of yours? Because what, looking at this, the casting, it just seems like this, these are just your regular everyday people. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah, um, honestly, that was my, that's my first time actually acting. Ever. Is that right? That's my first time actually acting ever on camera. Of course, when you're young, you do church plays and all that, but that was my yeah. first time actually acting ever. Uh, wow. the writer, director, editor, Robert Garema, me and him were college roommates in Florida and M University. Is that my, right? Yes, we both we both went to Florida and M University. He later transferred to Howard and transferred to USC, California. Oh, but wow. we were we were you were roommates in um in Florida and M for a year. So and we okay. both were actually from born and raised in D.C. So we both lived across from each other in the same house. So that's how me and him always bonded over the years. Yeah. So when he was in, so then to, we used to live together maybe 2007. So okay. he called me 2017, mm. driving from California with our other roommate that we used to live with. Them two always are still cool. He's driving California. He calls me. Mm -hmm. And was like, yeah, this was going on, man, Movis. I called him, my mom, what's going on? What's going on, man? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I'm driving from California uh, about to shoot this film. Mm. My mind, I'm like, why are you driving from California? I didn't even think about him saying, this. <laughs> why are you driving from California? I'm like, you know what? Boom. Not knowing that he's actually, in the beginning of the film, you remember they driving on the road, he's already recording. Yeah. Like, yeah, he was recording that while he well, was he's actually on the, yeah, the, the, the Him driving all the way to DC to, to start the film, he's already recording. Yeah, yeah he was recording the film oh. already. Oh. <laughs> that so back in 2017. Was, <laughs> yeah, this is 2017. Wow. So he called me. I believe 2017, I don't want to get the line, but I believe it was 2017. So he called me, I didn't give no, I'm like, Mo, just let me know when and where to be at. Yeah. And that's what it was, and that's how I got into it. And and that's wow. how it was. Wow. <laughs> that's how it was. It was, so basically it was just a favor for a friend, honestly. So that's how yeah. it became. I so was, I, er, everything, this whole Netflix, whole thing, I wasn't expecting none of this, but it has been a blessing. Right, so so he just hit you like, hey man, I need you. Can you, can you <laughs> look out yeah. for me? Like, yeah, I'll do a little something for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, that, that's so it just really happened like organically on some just like let me just connect with people I know, pull some resources together, and let's just try to shoot some. <laughs> yeah, and wow. other people you know in, in other little realms, like the uh, the main ca character Jay, he was already he was doing stage plays, he already was doing acting, and somebody wow. called him about auditioning for residue. 
Yeah. And morale we wanted somebody who can commit two weeks straight. And the dude Obena, the mm -hmm. page J, he was like, I'm, I want to do this. So they met just off to just audition. And then he, he fit in real well with everybody. Wow. So I, I, I wanted to ask, like, just watching the film, did you guys, uh, like, as far as the, the cast members and other members who are in the film, did you guys know each other at all? Like, prior honestly, to the film? Marawi did. Marawi kind of, like, knew everybody because they knew some people that was from Q Street, where it's actually was shot in D.C. Some people from the neighborhood, like, uh, the guy, Young Jay, is his, mm -hmm. his best friend's son. So he playing, like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, his best friend's son, so we know them, and his folks, his parents, they own a bookstore in Washington, D.C. called Sankofa next to Howard University. Okay. So they real well known in the black community. So just off his, his parents alone and just knowing uh, he followed his parents' footsteps because his father was a filmmaker as well. Uh, and following his parents' footsteps and knowing his, his parents' history, everybody was just, it was, it was easy for him to, to get people to come along. It was, it was easy on some, some points, not right. all. So amongst you guys, as far as like the, the other cast members, y'all really didn't know each other. He just kind of pulled y'all all together. It's like, hey, nice yeah. to meet you. We're going to do the scene together, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Just like he told me the story about how he met the cinematographer, the guy that shot the film three days before shooting the film. Get out of like, here. Yeah, he met him three days before shooting the film. <laughs> so it was like, it was what? that type of, you know saying, just, oh yeah, this person, he knew everybody and brought us all together. And, and he yeah. knew him. He really had to pull some strings. Well, he's like puppet master. <laughs> he made it happen, though. That doesn't sound easy, man. Especially, I was doing some research on on him. Uh, this is his first official film, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yes, it is. Wow. I mean, for that to be his first, you know, idea and, and thing that he really believed in, it just went hard with the the outcome. You know, it's just. Crazy. You, I wouldn't think that that's a, okay. This is a first time actors, first time director, big film, blah blah blah. When you look at it, it looks like someone who's experienced in that, like that done multiple films or act before. But it doesn't come off like that watching it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think that just come from, like I said, his parents, his father Holly Grama and his mother. Um, mm -hmm. They both shot very independent films. It's like saying Kofa, Bush Mama, a lot of just, I'm saying Black Empowerment, Black films, just history, and they think his parents are Ethiopian. So just mm -hmm. saying that in his bloodline and just mm -hmm. making films, seeing his father do it. Because the funny thing is, in college, he was in college, he was a musician, he wanted to be music, he wanted to play the guitar. So oh, I didn't even know anything. Good. I didn't even know he had a family background of, of movies and all that until actually getting the film and knowing. I'm like, how can you didn't tell me? You, you never told me. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a surprise to you like what you shoot a movie <laughs> yeah exactly exactly wow so what was what was the um uh we gonna talk more about it in depth but what was the atmosphere like on set like how was the atmosphere like just just being on set every day on set it was since we shot like, in the neighborhood it just felt like you was just in the neighborhood it was outside okay. it's just it's just cameras around you just you yeah. can't just you enjoying yourself while you're still kind of working Nah. That's how I feel. It was, it was all love all around. Kids from the neighborhood, he pulling kids like, hey, I want to be in a movie. They running around. They, <laughs> the kids in the neighborhood, he just pulling them. They running up and down the street. He pulling them. It just, it was like a family, yeah. neighborhood, community oriented feel. For real. Yeah, that's great, man. That's dope. What was the, uh, for you in this film, what was the most challenging scene for you to shoot? <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to say the most challenging. Yeah, like a couple of takes. Like, let me get that one more time. Let me get that one more time. I want to say, um, I want to say, I want to say all of them because you want it to be right. Yeah. And then me being a laid back guy in the way, if you seen the film, the way I was coming off with my friend Jay, I was hoping that he didn't think I was serious. <laughs> like, that, you know saying? that's me, me shooting. That was my first time actually meeting him when we were shooting the, oh, all them okay. things. So when we shooting, I'm like, man, I hope this guy don't. Think I'm real serious, and then <laughs> I think the I think the first time we shot the same thing, the first time I was on scene is the first time that I popped up scene on the film. The first time I actually was on a uh, shot, the first time I come out the alley in the scene or whatever. And yeah. I remember acting, and Morali told me he pulled me to the side and he was like, "Man, don't act. I don't need you to act." He was like, "You know your lines. Mm. Like you know you know what to say. I just need you to be this person. Don't act." Like this person, just be this person. Wow. So that's what he told me that he just told me just he told me just be me, but just tweak my my tweak myself a little bit more, yeah. like tap the deeper thing. So just I guess the first time actually initially just being and getting the nervous and not getting the nervousness out of it, and mm -hmm. like you know what the film you already in the cameras here everything there. 
the yeah. camera is here, everything there. I think probably the first time, and then after that, everything felt smoothly. Yeah, so, so he, made, that, he made that, me yeah. feel he made Morale knew how to make me feel comfortable after that. That's good. It's good to have a director that make you kind of like relax, like don't worry about it, just go ahead, just you know, just re- loosen up. You got it. <laughs> yeah, so I think that first initial time we did a couple of takes just trying to get the lines right, but I think after that, yeah. Um, and he made me feel comfortable. He knew, he knew, he we knew how to communicate with each other just from knowing each other. So he knew how to come at me. Right. Oh, I got you. <laughs> nice, nice. So I want to kind of dig a little bit into like your personal background. So looking at your character who you you play uh Delante, mm-hmm. um, what would you say like like how close is that character to who you really are, like personally? Was that is that someone that that like you were or you have like oh i can play this character that that's me all day like what's that how, how close are you in real life to that character delante it's funny because my um <laughs> my family and friends seen it with my mother she was like that's that's just you that's you know, <laughs> she, she, she knows her son but she knows that's just one avenue of me i have many different avenues yeah and just me from the southeast part of dc uh-huh. I, I have a little bit of Delante in me. My friends got a little bit of Delante in me. My family got a little bit of Delante in me. So mm-hmm. everybody, mm-hmm. so I took a piece of everybody that I've seen a little bit of myself, just things I noticed, the older guys in the neighborhood and things like that. So it, you said Delante is a part of me and a part of other people as well. Yeah. Just from being, just from being from DC or being from the area. Right. I want to talk about your, uh, your, your Instagram account. I think like, because in this in today's like world we live in, there everything is kind of like boom, 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 quick consumption. Everybody just watch something and on to the next. Is and it's a lot of self uh, gratifying stuff. It's a lot about me, 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 me stuff. When I look at your Instagram, um, you show a lot of love. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it doesn't seem like you, like you are so hell bent on like, hey, look at me, look at what I'm doing. It's about me. Look at my gear. Look at my watch. Look at, look at all these women. Look at, look at my trip. I did. Look at the vacation. Look, look at the car. Look at this. It's like, and it doesn't seem like you gratify that stuff. It seems like you're very positive, and you have this thing where uh, it's called like Lindsay Love. Mm-hmm. Like, like you just you like like you know you like you just pull out the, the the phone you just shout out somebody on their birthday somebody that you've been down with for a long time or someone you just want to show love to or even just giving game like like you just like you know what I was watching this one where you was talking about like you know I just got finished working out you sweating <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> and you just started dropping jumps I'm like look at this <laughs> like like this man just like. Sweat fresh off the workout, and you got something on your mind. Like, let me just share this with the people. Like, what? Where did that come from? Why did you decide? So, you know what? I'm going to use my platform in, in this way. Where, where did that come from? Um, as honestly, I don't know. I know I started. I think I started doing it maybe like 2018. I was just a. It's a like random. Let me just put something out here. This on my. That's what's on my mind for real. For just a lot of things that you just think it just bothers you. And it's like, uh, let me just get it out there. Yeah. But I've always been a person that seeing other people happy make me happy. So, you know what I'm saying? That's, I've always mm-hmm. been like that. Even when to back in college, when you, I used to throw parties or whatever, I used to take my time and sit to the side and watch everybody enjoying themselves. And it's all mm-hmm. the fact that it's, it's something I'm doing. And it made me feel good. It wasn't like, no, I did this. It's like, no, nah, I'm just glad everybody enjoying themselves. And love is free. Love don't, it, it ain't going to cost nothing to show love. It ain't going to hurt you to show love. It ain't going to do anything. You know, all you saying, love is love, man. So I, I, it's, it's what you put out in the energy, what you receive. Sometimes you may not receive the love that you may put out, but in the end, you got to remain yourself and keep putting it out. So I always want to love the people who always been there for me growing up, who made me who I am today, and just give love to everybody. I don't have no no dick hate in my bone for anybody, man. man that, that, I just think it was at the point in my life is like, you know what? I'm just, I'm saying, just show love to everybody. Yeah, man. It's good. And I appreciate you acknowledging that, bro. Yeah, man. Like I said, I, I like to, like I said, I like to just have like those real conversations because like it's easy to talk about all of the hoopla and get caught up in, in the mess and you just kind of like miss miss things. And like I'm kind of like similar in the same way. Like I like to, and I think this is about you too. I, I get the impression that you're a real patient person. Like, like you come <laughs> off like a, a really patient person. 
like you don't rush things. You let things happen naturally. You let you it got happen. you. You got those notes, man. You got it. You, you got let it, it happen. Yeah, because I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Like I know when when I see one, I'm like, uh huh. I'm, I'm on to him. I know. <laughs> you got like, it. I got that same. Yeah, I got that same vibe for you because I'm the same way. I'm like, you know what? People always say, like, you so patient. Like you don't. Like why don't you have no like? Like you don't get like. Uh, like mad about stuff, you don't get frustrated if things will go your way. I'm like, it just wasn't the time then, you know. Like that, that time will come. You know, I'm not here to force it, rush it. If it happens, it happens. Let it happen organically. Because I find with, and I like your thoughts on this. Like I find with like when you kind of like force stuff or rush stuff, that product it ain't gonna be, <laughs> it ain't gonna be what, what you thought it was. Because like ah, oh, 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 then you see like oh, like. Damn, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like you just try to like kind of rush it. What's your thoughts on that? As far as like that that patience thing and like letting things happen organically versus like I want to hurry up, get it out to the people that have to see it. You know, because like everybody, like especially with us millennials, we're just <laughs> you know. Right. What's your thoughts on that? I think it just come. Um, it's a lot, man. I think I want to start with I guess just my parents. Let me see, my my parents. I'm I'm the uh oh baby. So my parents was like yeah. Uh, they I'm saying oh. 30 to my parents in their 70s. Really? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, just Ooh. watching. So, and I got older siblings older than me, too. So, just watching them being real observant, just seeing how my mother carried things and how she how she go about things when things get thrown at her. And yeah. just that instillment in, in, I'm saying, religion and God. Like, just know he don't make no mistakes. You can't rush him. And just that resonating. Like, you can't, I'm saying, you can't rush greatness. You can't rush God. So, a lot of times, like, you know what? I'm going to do my groundwork here. If it's, going, if it's meant for me, it's going to happen. Yeah. Not trying to rush it or anything. That just go with anything with a job, it could be a relationship, just all the just yeah, be observing, just patient and watch it work itself out the way it's supposed to. Yeah. When you were saying, you know, like you 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 the type of person that always show love to everybody, which is evident um on your on your social media, I, I was I was just kind of like thinking about that, like, man, like like in our communities, like we don't do that enough or do it a lot. You know, it seems like there's this like if I if I open myself up and show love to this person, then like you kind of feel like vulnerable, and especially us black men, you know we we got that bravado. We want you know poke our chest out like, and you know, <laughs> I mean I ain't got you know come on, man. I ain't gonna be showing the right love, especially publicly. <laughs> right. Like you you do it publicly. That that's I don't think people look at that and see how courageous that is. Like that takes a lot of courage, but at the same time, it's so simple to do. So simple. <laughs> like, like you were saying, it costs you nothing to, you know, let me just, six, 60 seconds. <laughs> right, 60, 60 seconds. <laughs> let me just I have a 24 hour that. day, you got 60 seconds, man. Yeah, but it's so hard for us to, to do that, to get that out, out of us. Like, cause you know, I, I know people, you're human. You gotta feel like, damn, like, yo, he doing this thing. I, you know, let me big him up, but then it's like, no, nah, <laughs> yeah, I ain't doing it. Like, why, like, I don't know why it's so hard for us in the community to just do that. <laughs> I feel like people feel like it's knowledge, and people feel like showing love or acknowledging, I guess, for black men, I feel like it's a, and I don't want to be quoted wrong, sometimes maybe a sign of weakness or quote unquote, people call me called the dick rat. Like, oh, yeah, you, uh, I'm saying you, you want a man, why you crazy? Like man? Dick, man. If, if, that, if that's your man, you showing him love, you showing him love. But like, I, I had to be confident in myself. Like, I, I tell all my friends who's males, grown adults, man, we, we end up, we chilling, whatever we leave, man, I love you, bro. I love you too. And it's yeah. all coming. We all, yeah. I have genuine love for that man. That man's right. a good brother. You know what I'm saying, why not acknowledge that while he's here? Yeah. Compared to saying that you wish you would have dated it, God forbid, if, if that person would have passed away. Right. You, That's what I, I, I like to tell everybody I love them. I don't have no love for any. I don't know how to hate for anybody. It's all love. Exactly. Do you ever get the impression that like, like not 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 saying like your close circle or maybe even that you kind of give off because I, I I've encountered this and this is how I kind of relate to this film which I'm gonna talk about a little later too, that you give off uh, an energy or vibe that people may think that you're better than them. Not like in the, like not like you're like intentionally trying to do it, but it just something like they kind of see like man like he's so free, like he's like he's open, he's he you know he doesn't try like and then that could come off like man he probably think like, like he better than people because like oh you could do that like do, do you ever get that sense that people may kind of feel that energy from you? Um, if I 
I really haven't. If so, I never really paid attention to it. I never really paid attention to like how like people think I'm I'm better than them because I never come off like that. Any right. and if people who know me, I kind of like down myself a lot. Mm. It's like we did good in the film. Like ah, that was alright. Like I kind of be down <laughs> myself. Like certain things yeah. when I feel like it's a compliment to other people, I kind of down it because I don't feel like it's as good as it could have been for me. So mm -hmm. people think I did the best. Like nah, nah, my I still got more work to do. So yeah. I never really felt like I walked into a room like, oh, I'm better than anybody. If anything, I walk into a room like I belong here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Like it, what I'm saying, nobody, what makes anybody, I'm not better than anybody, but what makes anybody better than me. Exactly, exactly. I, I figure like we're, we're all the same. You know, that's why I named the, the show Cloth Talk Podcast because mm -hmm. I believe that we're all cut from a different cloth. Yeah. <laughs> but we're all the same at the end of the day. <laughs> so, so that's what this whole show is about, just kind of exploring you know, like how we, how different we are, but, you know, at the same time, we're all cut from a different cloth. You know, we kind of just explore that through conversation. So let's just jump back into this film a little bit. We'll kind of bounce around a little bit. Yeah, John, no, it's cool. Yeah, man. So, so jumping back into the film, uh, Residue, for those who have listened, uh, if you're joining the conversation right now, make sure you check out Residue if you haven't seen it yet. Um, so I want to talk, kind of talk about my, uh, my personal, uh, I guess, relationship with this film. Like, I can relate to this film almost, like, really, really well. So I, I'll tell you about my story a little bit and how it kind of relates to it. Like, when I was watching, like, man, that makes me feel like, like exactly how he felt as far as Jay's character. So I'm from Philly. Um, what part? North. Okay, shout out to Philly, man. I know some good, good, good brothers up Philly, man. Shout out to Philly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Philly, that's where I'm from. So I'm in Ohio now, obviously. People like people always look at me like, well, who the hell would leave Philly to come to Ohio? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'll be looking at people like, I did something wrong. Like, God, did I do something wrong? Oh, no, because Philly, Philly was cool. Philly, every time with the Phillies, always, they show me love every time I've been up there, man. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're not too far. You're not too far out there. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all not too far. <laughs> yeah, so, so. Uh, so I'll just back forward. So 2008, uh, graduating high school. How old are you, by the way? 32. 32. Okay, I'm 30. So we not okay. Too far. Yeah. Ball, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I graduated 2008. I went to college 2009, and I wasn't going to go to college at all. Like I was one of those people. Like man, fuck college. You know, I ain't gonna waste my time. I'm gonna just get in debt. Oh, blah blah blah. All, right. Coming up with all these excuses of why not to do it amongst my guys and whatnot. Turns out I'm the only one out of my boys who's actually talking about college to go to college. <laughs> so oh. it kind of flipped. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. weird. Because they talk to me like, yo, man, you gotta go. We all going, you gotta go. I'm the one that end up going. Nobody else go. Wow. So I go off to Ohio. <laughs> First time I'm out of Philly, out of the state. Definitely culture shock, obviously. My college at Wilberforce University is where I went to. First, okay. Yeah, first historically black college. <laughs> so I end up out there, cornfields, <laughs> Central State, right across the street, culture shock. So fast forward, graduate, come back home, you know, with my degree and stuff. And I'm like, man, I'm happy. I want to show people like, yo, y'all could do something with y'all lives. It's more to this than standing out on the block, on the corner, you know, mm -hmm. doing whatever you're doing. You know, I want to show like it's possible. Guess what I get back in return? <laughs> oh, man. College boy. You, you think you better than everybody. Oh, what would you go tell us? Say, say something smart, nigga. I'm like, yo, what the? Really? I'm like, wow. Like, I'm trying to do something for us. Like, right, exactly, I'm trying to man. Be the first one, the example, like, to show y'all, like, yo, you can do something with your life other than, you know, <laughs> what we doing. Man, I'll tell you, like, it was like a complete 360. It was like, I did something wrong. It was like, boom, man, we ain't fucking with him no more. He think he better than everybody now. That's crazy. Yeah, so like, just kind of like watching Jay when he came back and everybody acting like, oh man, <laughs> even even your character, he was like, well, you know, university, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, like, damn, I was like, damn, Jay, I feel you, man. <laughs> Like uh, your character, the latte reminds me of um my guy Sean, who who treated me just like that. I was like, God <laughs> damn. I was like, sheesh, this is crazy. 
So I just kind of like wanted to ask you, like, have you personally experienced that as far as like, you know, like, you know, let me do something with myself. Let me go out, try to better myself to show people like, as an example, I just want to use myself to show you like, yo, it's possible to, to do some shit with your life. And, and that the opposite happens. They kind of look, it's like, oh, for real. So what you try to do is try to say, you know, <laughs> that you, you yeah. you're the chosen one. <laughs> right. <laughs> nah, I, um, Have you ever like felt I, said, that? I don't really, I, don't, I if, if it happened, bro, I really never really paid attention to it, man. Like I said, I'm always just trying to focus on the love of everything. Yeah. But the thing about it, it's funny because when I used to, because I went to Florida A and M, and how I went to college, it was I wasn't sad to want to go to college, but it was like my mother, and my sisters, kind of like, oh, now nah, you're going. Like this, no, <laughs> yeah, no choice. No kids, hands a bust about it. You're I going. I want to go, man. And um, just being in D.C. and uh. Just a, um, what really prompted me to really get out of D.C. really was uh, an incident that happened with, you know what I'm saying, almost something happened with me and this mistaken identity. Me and my friends were hanging out late one night and car pulled up, pulled guns out on us. We in mm-hmm. senior high school, pulled guns out of us like three, four in the morning looking for Ooh. some guys with us. Oh, so like, and it, was, it was almost mistaken identity. So I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, I really got to get up out of it. But when I left, <clears> I come back. The people I used to hang around when I was in high school, they treat me like I went to jail. Like, oh man, when you get home? Like, they, 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 it was like, it wasn't like, like, bro, when you when you get home or when you get out? That's how I kind of felt for real, for real. It wasn't like, no, oh, it was like, oh man, like I did time or something. That's how I felt. Yeah. Oh, but, it, but, but that never really, but like I said, even if you didn't come off as like you trying to be better, I never really possessed it. It's like, man, I'd be like, like you just said, you was like, yeah got to experience like I wish everybody would at least experience college yeah. so it's like they and they and me telling the stories and they hearing it it's like dang man I wish I would have went to college I'm like yeah man it's, it's more out here than than, yeah. than, than than DC exactly yeah it's like the world is much bigger than your neighborhood because I thought the whole world was like Philly <laughs> 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 I'm like oh this is everyday gunshot drag it off you know Drug dealers, crackheads, you know, terrible economy, you know, the typical hood stuff. You know, like, I thought the whole world was like that. I travel, I go out to Ohio, I'm like, oh, shit, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, where you from? Kali, why you talk like that? Where you from? Atlanta. Oh, shit, where you from? Chicago. <laughs> well, it just, and it just opens your, your mind up and, you know, you're expanding, you grow. And then, like, it's sad, like, when I go back, sometimes back to Philly, um, you, I still see the same guys hanging out on the corner, same guys doing this, same. It's like it, it's just sad, you know. It's just like man, like ah, but it's just heartbreaking sometimes. But anyway, it is, it is, it is, it is heartbreaking sometimes, especially when guys you see in high school that was. I'm saying y'all both right. good term. You see them later. I'm like, come on, man. Like, what happened, bro? Yeah, because like, hey, you, you can see the possibility. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's like, if you just wake up, it's, it's right there. It's right in your grasp. <laughs> right, man. That's all it be. It's right there. It's right there. Uh, let's talk about gentrification, <laughs> which yeah. this film uh, obviously highlights um, people who are tuning in on the conversation. Uh, we're chatting with my man. Uh, we just call call Lindsay Love. Lindsay Love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we call Lindsay Love, man. No, no, not not one bitter bone in this guy's body. <laughs> it's all love. Uh, Dennis Lindsay is his name. <laughs> so we're talking about the film Residue, uh, which is character he plays uh, Delante. Um, so talk about gentrification, which this film kind of represents in a large way. Um. It made me think about obviously my city and obviously the, the times that we're living in now where in the urban community in the hoods, they snatching them houses up, mm-hmm. fixing them up, and guess who coming in? <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and then with those houses, they are um the the value is raising and guess who can't afford it no more? Guess who exactly. got the floor? <laughs> exactly. Grandma been living there for 30 years, but Hey, <laughs> she can't afford fifteen hundred a month. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know, she's been paying. She's been paying. She's been paying less than eight her whole her whole time living there. Exactly. Got a new owner. He raising rent. Property value going up. They got to go out. <laughs> so I want to kind of talk about that. Like as far as like the the time we're in with that. Like when I the last time I went back to Philly, the neighborhood looked completely different. And that's what also reminded me that I was like, oh shit, like. 
damn, like, Jay knocked on the wrong door, like, can I help you? Like, oh, yeah. I think I got the wrong crib. <laughs> yeah. like, it, looks, it looks completely different. Um, in your area, particularly, where you at, are you noticing that in your area? Oh, yeah, for sure. It's been going on for, it's been planned for a while. Like, mm-hmm. my pastor, Reverend Willie Wilson, uh, he's been speaking on it for a minute. He's been telling us blacks, like, you got to stop purchasing your property, stop buying your property now. Yeah. They, I, he's been preaching yeah. it for a while. And so, morale, we think, like, just going to college for a couple months, you come back, you see something broken down or a new bridge. I'm like, Man, when this, when this happened, this is the next. Yeah. And just now you see neighborhoods where you wouldn't walk through in the daytime. You see <laughs> white people with their dogs walking through <laughs> just like no can in the world. It's like, I'm scared to go down this street. Right. But you walk like, ain't nothing gonna happen down this street. Right. And it's crazy, like I said, now it's, it's talking to some high school students. Yes, that's like gentrification that deals with lab. That's like one thing it does is broken promises. Mm. It's like when you come to the the projects and they tell like, oh yeah, we're gonna build it, build it up, make it better for y'all. When y'all come back, I can move right back in. But like you said, they raise they raise the rent or raise the mortgage up on it. And then just out further and further. And then the ones who got the money, which is the wife, they come back in. Yeah. We don't, like it's ownership, it's ownership with it. It's just broken promises. It's just so much. Like you say, you just yeah. see drag the change is over over the certain amount of time and years. Yeah. Do you think uh like gentrification in its entirety do you think is a good thing or a bad thing because i, I kind of look at it the flip side like okay you're, you're raising the neighborhood's value you're raising property value it looks better it looks nicer it's more safer and so forth and so on economy is raising in that you know area jobs and so forth and so on but then at the same time i kind of look at it from my perspective like yo this is my you got an emotional attachment to it. It's like, exactly. yo, this, is where, this is where I come from. This is my stumping grounds. You know, I, I grew up in that house. Like, they go about to bulldoze it down to build something new right there. Like, you got, right. cut, it's like a, like, you kind of like, kind of look at both sides. Like, how do you feel about it? Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? I, like I said, I, it's, it's, like you said, it, it brings, it brings the, the community up. It's, it's, it's a, a bittersweet thing, but it's more so better than sweet. Do yeah. you think about it? Let me say it's more so better than it is sweet. Because like I said, the property value, everything goes up, but none of it is ours. Right. None of it, that's, there's no ownership in it. The property value can go up, but we can take care of our own community and take care of everything yes. and just not let things get run down, even though, because we, sometimes we wait on people to do things for us. And that's just not so bad for everybody. Man. Just doing it for ourselves. Like if just for something small, it's just like, I think in neighborhoods like Baltimore, like trash pickups or just in DC trash pickups where they weren't picking up trash for a while. And people just letting the trash pile up and pile up. We just communities all come together and pick up the trash. We don't have to worry about smelling or complaining about it. So yeah. when it comes like getting pushed out, just banding together, first of all, having the knowledge to do it. I don't think we had the knowledge about or knowing the fact of yeah. gentrification, like what it's about, or the gentrifiers not even knowing or even can of the effect on us for real. All they just see is the opportunity, the opportunities. Yeah, and we have the opportunity as well, but we just sometimes people do take the opportunity. We may not be knowledge knowledgeable about it, or we just just coast on about it and just continue to live. Yeah, but now and like I say with Marabi with this film, somebody asked him a question, and he said, uh, asked him like, "What do he want just to pass to get out this film?" Mm-hmm. And his answer was, "This film wasn't for them." It was for us. It was to open our eyes up to see what's going on in our communities, see yeah. what's going on. He said, see what's going on in our neighborhoods, see what's going on not just in D.C. Uh, it was a hashtag on Instagram. It was New York still lies, D.C. Mm. still lies, New Orleans still lies, Philly still yeah. lies, Cali still yeah. lies. It's known like, yeah, this is this is still ours. So we not just, we're exposing just for, just for case, we're mostly trying to open our eyes to us. Like, yeah. come on, man, this is really going on. This is really happening in every neighborhood, or the majority of neighborhoods in, in, in the world. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. And it's like, it's crazy because like now with the friends that I, well, probably like two left <laughs> that I have back from when I was in high school, we just now got started into real estate. Mm-hmm. Buying up our, our, you know, our, our area where we come from. Like we, I, I sat down, I set them down. I was like, yo, man, my guy, uh, Leon, who I went to high school with, shout him out. I was like, listen, man. I was like, yo, I told I told him this last year, about a year or two ago. I was like, man, we gotta we gotta start doing something. We gotta make like a difference and also make some money to pull back into our community where we come from. I was like, yo, we gotta get in real estate. That's where the wealth is. Like that, that's where billionaires and millionaires are made. They everyone's investing in real estate. So I told I was like, yo, 
I'm going to come up with a plan for us. <laughs> I'm going to come up with a five-year plan. And I started writing. I started researching. I started going to seminars. Like every week I was going to a real estate clinic, how to flip a house, how to get into real estate, how to get rental properties. And now like we just pulled our, our, our money together. And we're starting to buy properties here in Columbus, Ohio, where I'm currently at. And we're going to invest back in Philly and stuff like that. So, so I can see, I seen that value. Like, man, it, you got to own, you got to mm -hmm. own property. Mm -hmm. You got to keep that, that money in your community. Because as we know, like, as far as like being African-Americans, we are the, the largest, you know, spenders. <laughs> we, yeah. just, we just give, 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 give. And we don't give, won't get nothing in return for that. Just like, here you go, Jewish community. Here you go, Chinese community. Here you go, Italian community. Just take our money and continue building your legacy and your wealth. Where we're just like kind of looking at pennies, like, <laughs> yeah, it's going on. And yeah. we, and then we, and then when we shop with ourselves, well, that's sometimes I had to understand growing up that you, you feel like you're entitled to that. Just like you know what I'm saying, you, you like to say, like you just said on itself, you see, you go to these high stores and pay the full price, but when it comes to your man, you want a discount. I don't treat understand your man like the, it, man. Treat your, man like, treat your friend like the high end thing, and, that, and that's how everything can grow. Oh man, it's that 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 crab in the barrel mentality. Like exactly. <laughs> everybody, the thing about this, it's enough room for everybody though, and I think people and people really don't see it's enough room, it's enough success, enough money, it's enough blessings for everybody out here, man. We just yeah. got to work together. That's exactly it. Got to got to pull your your your, your resources together because you can't yeah, exactly by yourself. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, like you want all the credit. Like, okay, like, go ahead and, and cause a headache for yourself and then get frustrated because now you, oh, nobody ain't helping me. You point fingers. If you just reached out to a couple of folks, <laughs> you, mm -hmm. you know, you, some like-minded individual, you'd be straight. But yeah, man, it's, it's this point in time where I think more than another, more than another right now, you know, as a whole, you know, we just got to come together and, you know, just put our minds to it because it's, it's not hard. Once I started learning, I was like, so this is the blueprint? Like, this all these people are just following. It's the same blueprint. <laughs> you pull, pull your money together, attack a, a, a certain area, and you just build out from there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's all how they're getting millionaires like this? They just buy here, buy there, buy there. And just You just keep. Like, just keep. Yeah, it's the process, like, man. That's it. I'm like, man, yo, like we are so far behind. <laughs> but I think with, with our generation, with being like millennials, I think that we are the most entrepreneur-minded type of people. Like, yeah. I see a lot of people in our in our age range, like from 25, 35 in that area. Ain't nobody want no five nine to five. <laughs> no, we don't. And it's, it's so it's so easy to become successful just right off your phone. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's with the technology that you can become successful and be your own entrepreneur is mm -hmm. right off your cell phone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everything is right there for you. Just a click, upload this, share this, share this. Mm -hmm. link, go here, download that for me. Here's my website. Copy yeah, that, the hat. If I could do this, if I could do this for eight hours a day, I don't gotta go into an Ooh. office. Man, people are turning Instagram followers into revenue. But like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> crazy it's crazy that's the technology just the brand of everything man it's crazy yeah um another thing i noticed about you uh is that you uh seem like you are a very spiritual person mm -hmm. very spiritual <laughs> uh obviously by you know the the love that you give out and you know the you know the gems and wisdom that you be saying in your clips um have you, have you always been that way as far as, you know, spiritually inclined? Like, was that always a thing for you as far as how you came up? Uh, yeah, I, mean, I was born and raised in the church. My best, ah. friend, father, my best <laughs> friend father was the pastor of the church I grew up in. So, oh, okay. So, that's what I'm saying. So, I've been to church. I've been at church all the time. And just when I got, of course, when you're younger, you really don't pay attention. I'm saying you went to church, but you're not really not getting it. Yeah, you, just so you, get, you just there. You just there because it's like it's an obligation. Like, we got to yeah. go to church. Sundays, or I was going to see my friends. But um, <laughs> just as you, as I got older, man, and just understanding when I'm going through, I'm saying going through a lot of things, and just realizing, like a lot of times when I was going through things, I would cause first person to go to was my mother. Mm. My mother would, she would result me to a Bible verse, or I'm saying something like that. When I just wanted to comfort, she had put me into a Bible verse, and just knowing and sometimes understanding, like you really, it's absolutely nothing you can't do without God. That's I don't care what it is. And just me just 
knowing that and understanding it and just realizing it and just being thankful. Just sometimes, sometimes I just be driving, just sitting around, just chilling. I might say thank you just for no apparent reason. It's just thank, just being thankful, just being happy, man. Because it's things could be way better, but it also could be way worse. That's right. And, and then just being blessed, to, and don't be, and don't look, don't look. I don't really look at where what happened to me. I look at where I came from. I like to change the narrative on things. So people are like, "Well, this happened to me. This is now, nah, man." I like to look at like, man, look where you at now. Like, look where you came uh, from. Wow, that that's an interesting perspective. I never looked at it that way. Like you're right. We always kind of like. Look back and say, I've been through some shit, man. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. And I, just, I, and just that. Like, I, I like that how you flip that perspective. Yeah, and it's like, don't look at it in the bad ways. Look like, man, I done came, I done came through the, this. I done came through that and I'm still here. And just knowing that you wouldn't have made it without yourself, you got to give yourself credit for just making it through that and just show your faith and blessing and everything. Mm. On every religion, this don't got to be Christianity. It could be, I'm saying Buddhism, it could be Allah, what not, whatever you can pray to. Yeah, dope, man. Uh, do you think? Uh, do you have aspirations to act again? More acting for you in the future? It's, do, do we need? Do we need to know something? Is there? Is there exclusive something you are working on a project you can't talk about? I know how y'all artists get y'all. Y'all once their first joint come out, y'all get these calls, these offers, yes. emails. That's that's super funny, man. <laughs> that's funny. Just got an I email really, today. I've been I've been getting I've been getting I've been getting extremely a good amount of love from everybody. Um, like I said, this is this has been my first film. Yeah. And people have been asking, like, yeah, you go out the game, you should out the game, you should take out the classes. And I had to explain, like, people, this was, first of all, this is a favor for a friend. And yeah, also, like, I was a career path for me. <laughs> it, but I was, I was also spoiled with this one, too, because, mm. like I said, the writing director was my friend. Like, this yeah, is my, it was a good brother to me. So he knew what to expect from me. I knew what to expect from him. I ain't had to deal with no up the butt or asshole as a director yeah. or writer. He knew how to communicate with me. So he kind of spoiled me and made everybody amongst the crew feel very comfortable. But mm-hmm. just being a part of it and learning it, I told him once the, before the final cut of the film, I said, Mo, put me in everything you got. Because I had <laughs> fun. I said, put me in anything else. This before I even seen the film and everything. Really? I'm like, the film came out. When he, before he finished editing it for his final cut, I'm like, just put me in everything you got. Like, I enjoy really doing film. And it was just the fun of and just seeing how, like, that was my first time being on an actual movie set. So just, Damn, oh, and it wasn't yeah. like just four or five cameras. He worked with one camera. He had a small, a good amount of people, a tight knit, trusted amount of people to did the crew. Was with one camera? One camera. Really? Yeah. Damn. One camera over, over, one camera over. Uh, How long did it take to shoot? He shot it two weeks for two summers. So he came, I think, 2000, two, I think I would leave the 2017 summer. He shot two weeks straight. And oh. then went back to California to do editing. Then the next summer, he came back, shot two weeks straight, and then went back. And it was, just, I guess, the timing of just having the equipment and renting it. It wasn't like we had a long, it's like, we got to get this done in these amount of time oh, because yeah. that's the amount of time we had to get it done. We got to go. We got to roll. We got to, exactly. We got to, we got to go. Dang. And I think that's what kind of made the, I think the urgency of it kind of like what made it so raw because we didn't have the time to be lax with it or be relaxed with doing things like, oh, we could just do it tomorrow. I was like, nah, this got to get done today. Dang. And with him, he worked around my schedule. The certain days I couldn't be there. He's like, I right, we just going to shoot your pop whenever you can come. And mm-hmm. I heard him out there 12, 13 hour days shooting. Ooh. I'm saying in the summertime, he, day from, from sun up to sundown, Dang. being in there late nights, then still going home, editing, and getting an hour and a half sleep and getting back to going back to the neighborhood to shoot again. So yeah. it was, they did the whole crew, shout out to the whole crew. They did a whole lot, man. The people made a lot of sacrifices. Uh-huh. Damn, one camera over two summers. <laughs> one camera over two summers for basically a month straight. A month, yeah. two, two weeks apart. And then 2019 summer, I believe, was just audio, a little audio here and there. He just wanted to fill in. Damn, wow, man. That, that's that's crazy. So, so, you, so you being from there, so you just just be at your house and just walk the set or go to set, drive the set. Like, all right, let me let you drive the set real quick. Yeah, I didn't say I put up, yeah, I, I put up on set like he was like, hey, can you do this? Like, yeah, I, I, oh, I can't. Like, I come later on on that tomorrow. Like, oh, that's cool. I pull up on set and that'll be it. But it was fun. I would love to continue doing it. Just now, it's funny. I like I like this too. Just like we having a conversation, really, for like interview. Yeah. I like doing it because I told him. Like I want to, I want to be childish now. Like Delonte was, like you said, it was kind of easy for me. I could be that. Yeah, like, I know like, I could that. Be <laughs> like that's just one avenue of things I've done. I've been in the corporate world before. I've been. I feel like I want to see. I want to test myself and challenge myself to see if I can do something different than being tight as as Delonte or anything else. 
Yeah, man, that's dope. It seems like this story is like like pretty much about him, the director. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. Like I kind of figured that like this is about him. <laughs> in the in the in the beginning, before, like loosely, like you could tell it's like, all right, uh, yeah. In the beginning before in the beginning before the film like started to take off, people were asking, like, is this about you? And he kind of downplayed, like, yeah, every every um every writer or director kind of puts themselves into their stories. Yeah. And then later on, people started to catch it on. And he like, yeah, it's basically it's about, it's about me. Yeah. It's about him. It's, it's, it's him, but it's basically like just not his specific story, but just story of people just like him. Yeah. Because everybody has a Delante that, that traveled left and then come back home, has a Delante, or has a Demetrius, a friend they came from, or has a OG or older head that's in jail somewhere that yeah. just left. And come back. Well, all my friends, I just went home, went, Went the went away that the better myself when I come back. People treat me differently. People treat like you see yourself, your friends treating you yeah. like that, your college boy. So it was yeah. it was like it was it was it was for people like that. It, yeah. But it was basically he just used him as the example. Will we ever find out what the hell happened to Demetrius? <laughs> man, I'm I'm trying to figure that out. I'm trying to figure that out. Like, like he asked my man Jay asked like y'all you see Demetrius? Why you keep asking about this man, y'all? <laughs> I don't know, fuck, man. Yo, I see you knocking on everybody's door. <laughs> <laughs> you got nothing. That shit, like, yo, you keep asking about this man. But he just trying to look for his friend, man. Fuck. <laughs> that's how it is. Dude. That's how it is. Yeah, that's how it is, nigga. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Walked away. I'm going to get at you later. I'm going to get at you. You know that's how he be bugging, you know. <laughs> yeah, you didn't watch that film, man. You didn't call, you didn't call it you. that drink. You recorded that real well, man. You got me crying and laughing. Yeah, that's you recorded that one real well. Oh yeah, bro. I thought I watched it twice. Yeah, man. <laughs> the, everybody's just like, I'm like, what the hell is up with the beaches? Why am I scared to speak on this man? I'm like, what? Like, are we gonna get a reveal at the end of the movie? Or is this gonna be like a part two? Or we find the beaches? Like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing about it, because a lot of time me watching the film, granted, as much as the people seen it, you seen it had the time. I've seen it. I paid attention to a three. The really? first time of the screening, I was I wasn't paying attention to the film, seeing what I did, like how I was, <laughs> I, what did I do? So when they when we first screened the film, I was looking at me to see how I did it. Ah. But the second time I seen it was in Italy. We was in a uh, Venice oh, Film Festival good. in Italy. Um, they won and, an award too. Uh, uh, residue, right? Yeah, where's the one award at Slam Dance in Utah? Man. We won, um, we won, uh, it was, I forgot what the name of the one, getting mistaken, but we, they loved us out there. We was like the only black film out there. Uh, uh, Canada, movie. right? An award out in Canada? It was not, it been in Italy. Italy, okay. I don't know where I got Canada from, but okay, yeah, damn. <laughs> oh, you might be talking about the, um, the ML Festival, uh, Think Best <laughs> Nerd. Thing. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I think it might be best nerd to one one of those. I believe he just won best nerd to film, but yeah, Italy, okay. yeah. Seeing it on a big screen, like an actually movie theater, was it actually weird? The film, was it weird the, seeing yourself like that? Like yeah, it was. You're like, oh shit, <laughs> that's what I look like. <laughs> yeah, and it was amazing because the our movie sold out. Our movie sold out in like a day, and this is COVID Ooh. sold out. You know, it was seats between everybody. Yeah. It sold out in a day over there, and seeing myself on the screen, it was it was crazy. <laughs> like like you. You critiquing yourself like, dog, that's you. Like, wow. Yeah, man. <laughs> and just saying it was just just so just so wild and so amazing. So when I actually paid attention to the film again, I had to ask myself, I had to ask Mo Morale. I'm like, hey, did I do this? Or did I do that? Or like, because I'm like watching the film, like, hey, whatever happened to this? So with Demetrius, like I said, good thing about it, you that's how it is in the neighborhood. It's like you got a friend you grew up with, like, man, what happened to so and so? People are like, man. He's either just on it, he on his own time, or he yeah. even locked up, or he's like, man, we don't know where he at. He yeah. last time I heard from him, he was out so and so. So All right. like, that's, the, that's that's like thing. It high is high really be for real. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Everybody got to meet you. It's like somebody like either just disappear, or you don't know what the hell happens. Like you know, we don't know where he at. Like you know where he at, man. Like stop playing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like no, you don't. <laughs> stop asking about this man. <laughs> And another and another funny thing too about the film mm. is that people was getting upset with me for not saying like how much of a role I had in the film. Really? I didn't know. That's what people understand. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. Robbie, he didn't. I only showed up on set when it was time for me to shoot. I didn't stick yeah. around for other I didn't know how it all was gonna come together until mm. I like I said, I paid attention to it. I'm like, oh snap, like 
Yeah, like you really I really, really like Pivotal in the film. I'm just something like I'm in this movie. I'm kind of down, but like I do everything else. I'm kind of yeah. down. Like, yeah, I'm in this film. Yeah, I'm in the movie. Da 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 da. Until it started getting picked up more, I started seeing like, oh no, nah, I'm no, I'm really in the film. Yeah. And then shout out to Ava DuVernay Entertainment right now when she actually the trailer they put out and seeing me on the trailer, hear me talk. I was like, oh, like that kind of that yeah. that the way right there. But well, no, I was getting real serious. So people was getting mad. I didn't know how much people who I was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your, your character is, is a real important character. It's like like that. I don't think that the movie would like it would still work, but I don't think it would work to its fullest without your character. Because you you need that that character to kind of shake some shit up a little bit. <laughs> mm-hmm. You need just somebody that's a little jab, poke here, poke there, jab a little yeah. bit, you know? And I think Morawi created that because I believe originally he wanted me to play Dion in jail. I think he wanted really? me to originally. I, I think he Dude, originally wanted me to I was going to ask you that. I was like, I think he was supposed to play the older guy in jail. <laughs> I think he, I think Morawi originally wanted me to play Dion. Don't get me mistaken. I think he like, nah, I got something for you. And I think it was, he twisted me and put me to Delonte. Mm-hmm. And created and created it off that one, so that's how it was. Oh, that's crazy! I was thinking, I was like, he could have been the 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 home, the older, the big brother type character. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I could have seen that too. But either way, I think it would have worked either way. But you, your real <laughs> role is definitely, I think, is an important one in the film. Got to have a guy like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, like, who, who, who you think you are coming back here to working on your script? I got a movie too. Let me tell you about it. <laughs> It's tell you about your ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's how like, you flipped it. Like, like, I work on a script too. Oh, yeah? Tell me about it. <laughs> so it's his brother, right? <laughs> his older brother go off to school. <laughs> and his, brother's, his, his younger brother's still in the war zone. But when you come back, it's a jungle now. <laughs> right, right. I'm like, ooh! <laughs> You think, you think it's sweet when you come back. It ain't sweet. Yeah, like, this shit that got real. Like, motherfuckers is older now. Motherfuckers got their own family. Like, yo, like, right. it's, a forest, yeah. it's a jungle now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Was that, was that, that scene particular, was that improvised or was that written or co- combination of both? If I can remember, because it's crazy, I said I was going to print out the scripts and just have them hard copy just to, just to have them. But okay. if I can remember... I remember that day shooting and um, we was talking, he was trying to figure out how to do it. And remember I was talking, he was telling me like how he wanted, he he, he, he was telling me how the build up was going to be just to, uh-huh. he was thinking that expecting the film, but he like, I need you just to smash them though. Like I need uh-huh. you to, he basically was, he was, we was, so we went away like certain type of trying to find different angles for me to kind of like, um, to kind of like bring him down. And he was talking about on another uh, interview we had that how like when we did all that, I kind of like, he said, I can't, I don't remember. He was like, he kind of like went, went deep. Like you, you mm-hmm. went, like you went kind of deep and was saying other things. Like he lost the audio to it, I believe. Oh. He was like, he was like just figuring out like how I wanted to build that thing that's coming in all smooth and then go downhill from there. And it's like, to have him saying had Jay, just think like, oh, you might be talking about me. So yeah. different angles, even to the fact when they're like that, 10 seconds stay. He, yeah. he was telling me, like, hold it. He just kept telling me, hold it. Hold, like, hold it. He told me, hold it, like, for for the, all that whole town. So. Yeah, because I was, like, looking at the stuff, like, damn, like, he grew, like, like, you don't want you to feel this. Feel that. Yeah. <laughs> you gonna feel what I just said. Talk about you, man. <laughs> yeah, and I watched, and I actually watched, I'm like, damn. Like, I said, like, damn. I said, like, <laughs> I said, damn, I ain't, I ain't know I did that. And shout out to my brother. Shout out to Obana, man, the guy who played Jake, man. Good actor, yeah, man, good brother. I was just hoping that he didn't think I was serious when I was like, <laughs> I, hope, I hope he don't think I'm serious, man. All right, all right. It's all love. I'm Lindsay Love. <laughs> this, this, this is just a character. I, I love you, man. All right, cut. That's a wrap. You'll be good. Be straight. Be good. <laughs> man, that, that was dope. That, that was a powerful scene right there. Let me rap to you real quick. Tell you about yourself real quick. <laughs> that's that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people saying or whatever. People that's a lot of people's favorite scene. So I like that scene a lot. Yeah, I like that scene a lot. Um, this thing got ninety six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> yeah, 96- and and, uh, and Rotten Tomatoes is notorious for killing people. Shit, like <laughs> like that's a high high rating. Um, ninety six percent. 
that's that wow especially mm-hmm. like for your first film as, as a writer director even actors um that's a major accomplishment i know that you were saying earlier that you really didn't have like the expectation for the film you just like yeah i look out for my own way you know I, I, whatever you need me to do i'm down to do it but let's do it and like i'm pretty sure a lot of y'all was blown away by the reception of this film <laughs> how have you been like kind of, is it still like kind of like man like people really love this film yeah it's like i said it's crazy because me and me and obana we 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 connected close since um we've been to italy because the only time i seen it was on set so when we went to italy for the film festival me and him connected real tough and we was like we Italy wasn't in the picture like this wasn't in the picture at all for us like yeah. our peak was Howard Theater down the street Howard University is like a historical theater where he wanted to present the film in DC okay now it was like our big thing like okay man the DC get to see it that's what's up that's a bet so when it all happened with they had got it something to a film fest with a slam dance in mm-hmm. um in Utah in, I think January February mm-hmm. and they racked up awards there and then uh, right now, Ava DuVernay's company was there. And when uh-huh. they seen the film, I guess they kind of like, remember Robbie talking behind the scenes, he kind of told me like, man, it's a possibility in Netflix. You thinking like, ah, okay, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Me expecting the film, I'm expecting the film to be shouting the iPhone or Android. <laughs> I'm thinking like, I got you, remember, look out for my man. I didn't, it blew me away to say how the whole setup and the equipment was. Yeah. But, um, but then you to hear people talking, but it was like, ah, okay. So then he comes to me with Venice. I'm thinking Venice, California, like Venice Beach. I'm like, this COVID time, COVID time going on, ain't they shut California yeah. down? But then later on, he told me, he like, yeah, Venice, Italy. I'm like, Italy? <laughs> For real? Like, this film is getting us to Italy. Uh, and so uh, end up working that out. And then later on, when he sent the email out about the Netflix, I'm like, oh, shit, it's really happening now. And just to build that from there. So I guess September was real crazy for us just being out in Italy for a whole week which was amazing and they're coming right back and then promo for the film yeah. it's just been, it's just been real wild and then the actual just day of the film and I wait I ain't want I like I wanted to, to wait on the 18th it came out on September 17th I wanted to see what the reception was like I want to see what everybody think yeah I want to see everybody feel about the, the, the movie on the 18th so it's been a crazy build up it still feel good it's still accepting of all the love from everybody yeah. Appreciate everybody criticism or 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 compliments on my um, right. or, or that. my or, or my act or my acting because uh, <laughs> we was in Italy and they viewed it in Italy and we out one day just waiting the, the uh, to go back to our place where we live at and mm-hmm. some lady walked me and recognized Morali but she recognized me too and was like yeah uh-huh. you wasn't so nice to your friend in the film like, Why aren't you? <laughs> and this is this is over in Italy she's like yeah you wasn't so nice to your friend in the film and I was like I I'm like thank you like if you feel like that that I mean I did a pretty good job. Yeah, man, that, that's a beautiful thing, man. Like th- these type of things, you just can't plan. Like you just can't plan this. It just kind of like just happens. Like it's just all right. Yeah. I guess we in there now. We in it. Like like I say, man. I'm, I got like I said. I was about. I'm not God. Keep working. That's what I tell him. Like, God, <laughs> God keep, keep working. Keep working. I'm working with you. Just keep working. That's beautiful. Man. This is the path that I would have not expected at all, man. I'm thankful for it all. Right. What What would be one surprising thing? That's like a, a a misconception about you. People that kind of like will kind of look at you, and, they, and if they don't know you, like what 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 do you think like a surprising misconception about uh, Dennis Lindsay is? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, that's crazy. Uh, so any other probably I, I get emotional at times. As much as my come off cool, uh, like yeah, I have a hot. You know what I'm saying I have a got, hot. Got a, got a little hot temper here and there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, a little, little bit here and there, but like I said, they come with, you no, know, a little bit, a little bit sensitive at times, but not all the time. But you know I'm saying I don't want to come off hard. I just want to come off real. Yeah, like I don't come off as no big bro. Like no, nah, man, I, I had to. I mean, him a being too as well. <laughs> right, right. So, so there's uh, uh for the ladies that are watching, obviously, <laughs> they want to know what's the situation. <laughs> can can they slide in the DMs? Can it, is is Lindsay Love really in love right now? <laughs> it's, a, it's a man available because you know what, what, what comes with a little bit of success, they come out of the woodworks. <laughs> yeah, but it's it right. And, and me knowing and me understanding and knowing that, I'm not even, it's like I'm far too, like I don't even want all of that, like just the, the things. So I'm, 
I'm good right now. I got something <laughs> going on. So I'm, I'm good right now, man. Uh, I, I try for y'all ladies. There, there's one girl in particular who told me that. So. <laughs> Appreciate you. Appreciate you. <laughs> you talking to him? Yeah. Ask him. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure there, there's other women who, you know, who, who are listening and probably watching. They want to know what's up with, with Lindsay Love. <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate everybody. I appreciate you. <laughs> so safe to say for the ladies listening, Dennis Lindsay is off the market. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies want to know. I got it down to ask. I mean, I don't care. It doesn't make a difference to me. <laughs> I'm asking the questions for the woman. <laughs> off the market, yes. Yes. Okay, there you go. <laughs> for those who who, can, who are listening, he nodded yes. <laughs> He got something going on. <laughs> he just can't talk nah, about nah, it. Cool. Like I said, I'm good, man. I got, I got, I got, I got, I, I'm, I'm good, brother. I appreciate the love. You'd have called, you'd have probably called me maybe my 20s. Like, yeah, man, bring them on. But I still was kind of a reserved type of guy. Like I said, I'm a reserved type of guy anyway. So yeah. regardless, 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 even if it was something, wasn't something, I probably still be like, nah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I like to be reserved, man. I like to be in the cut. Yeah, <laughs> I feel that. That's how I am too. Like, kind of like reserve, low back, low key. You know, I want some mm-hmm. attention. You know, <laughs> just give you one shorty, we good. <laughs> yeah, you're saying, if, if I'm saying people may not know who she, people, people, people who matter will know. Everybody else won't don't even matter. Yeah, exactly. I don't need everybody in my business. <laughs> right. So, so, so with uh, speaking of love, I guess. So, speaking of that, there also comes a lot of hate. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, a, a lot of naysayers. A lot of and that movie wasn't that good. That the acting was boring. It wasn't this and there. It wasn't all that. Who are these people? We don't even know these actors. Blah blah blah. You always got those naysayers. Um, so speaking of uh, the negative criticism about this film, um, I wonder as a uh, this I guess kind of more of a director uh, or creative type of question, but I wonder how that affects that actor, that creator, that writer. Um, when they see the negative criticism of something they put, you know, a lot of effort into that means something to them. Um, for you, uh, did you did you kind of like look at that and kind of like criticize yourself? Like, damn, maybe I I could have did that a little bit better because you you're already hard on yourself in that regard. Like you said, you was watching yourself. Like, I want to see, you know, what. What I what I did, how how I could probably improve. Damn, I should have did it that way. I should have said it like this. Could have put a little bit more energy into it or whatever. Are, are you kind of looking at those comments and kind of like, damn, they are right. Like kind of like soaking that in, or it's kind of like it just comes with it type of thing. It just it just comes with it, and you just realize like who who you what was the purpose of the film? The purpose of the film was to get the story out. It wasn't to hear the people criticism. Yeah. You know what I'm saying it's, it's the it was, that was the purpose of the film is to get this story out about DC and, and Morales' vision. So yeah. when it comes to the good reviews, thank you, and the bad reviews too, thank you as well. That means you watched the film. That means you may rough with your fellows. That means you may be a gentrified. We may rough with your fellows a little bit. So thank yeah, you for yeah. watching the film. A lot of times, see bad reviews, and maybe we be like, that, "That's P probably gentrified. He's probably don't." Nah. It's, if you hear the negative about it, it's like, "Yeah, we rough with a couple of fellas. We may not like it, but we appreciate it." You watched the film. You gave you you devoted an hour and a half of your time to it. So. <laughs> right, like, you still watched it though. Right, it, <laughs> that that's what it, is. It, it, it wasn't for the good criticism, the bad criticism. It was just for the story in general. Yeah. That's how we, that's how morale we look at it, and how we all look at it. That's great. That's great. We're we going to focus on that. We, we did. We executed the project, mm-hmm. got it done. We happy with that. <laughs> exactly. That's dope. Was, it, was there any scenes that got cut out? Uh, it was, it was planned. I think it was, think it, I think total, it was maybe four hours worth of uh, film. And we just knocked it down to, to an hour and a half. So that's a lot of scenes that we won't even probably get to see. Yeah, and he told me he was like, he was, he was like, bro, that's the last scene that you probably remember." Just because, like I said, I ain't seen him until the next year. After them two weeks, I ain't seen him to the next year, the next <laughs> summer. So I don't feel like it's it's funny because I think 2019, I believe, I think I forgot we even shot a movie. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that's how much time went by. <laughs> yeah, because it was like 18, I think 19, going through whatever I'm going through. And um, I think he called me like, yeah, bro, I'm like, oh, what's up? He's like, I'm like, oh, snap, we dish. Like, I'm like, oh, yeah, we got we dish. Yeah, I come, I come do some voiceovers. Yeah. Some that audio for like, oh, that's right, my fault. Dude, we, we did do that, right? Yeah, exactly. That's why I actually forgot we shot it because he was like, I ain't having talked to him. He called me because when he, he, when he in DC, when he get a time to himself, like, yeah, we come through Harlem, man, do some voiceover, we could talk. And I'm like, oh, it's not we did, we did shoot with them. <laughs> right, that's right, we did, didn't we? Yeah, that's I crazy. Can't, I can't, I can't forget now. I know that for sure. Yeah, that's right. A lot of people were reminding you. <laughs> Damn. So, so after y'all finished filming, you just went back to regular life. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right back to regular life. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. How that happens. Like, well, that's done. Let me go back to my regular life. <laughs> and, it was, and it was, like I said, it was tough because everybody had to like, but we didn't. Nobody got paid for this film. Really? Nobody didn't pay for this film. What? Yeah, then the people that's people expect them people think got paid, and that's how a lot of and that's what kind of made it the the film organic as it was because people just did it for the love of the film. Mm -hmm. They wasn't looking for no arterial motives or, or anything or no big payout from it for real. Nobody really expected uh, it to be this big. And that's the the huge beauty of it. I think everybody in the film just did it for their experience, for the love mm -hmm. of acting, or just the love of morality and just the love of just being a part of something. And they wasn't looking for no hand. I was looking to be cashed out of and everything. Yeah. And I think just just the love of the knowing that, and that's how we become blessed to, to even be on Netflix because we didn't. We nobody got paid, and I believe a lot of actors that he may have wanted to be in it didn't want to mess with because it wasn't a paying gig. Oh really? So yeah. So he reached out to other actors, and they turned it down because they wasn't getting paid. Yeah. Wow. Or people that that's for for actors, they may feel like, oh no, nah, it's not on a grand scale, or just the the scale of the film, I believe, wasn't as big as they would think they are on the film, or like, oh, we got a lot of cameras, a lot of crew. They yeah. kind of like that's downplay. I'm like, nah, I'm I'm good on that for real. Ah oh, man, well, hey, they lost. <laughs> like, I find with you know what? Speaking of that, because that that actually makes a perfect transition to my next question, as far as um. With your, as far as like black cinema in general, as far as like where the place it is in right now, I I hear a lot of people when it comes to to black films that it's it's a lot of rumblings going around like people are sick and tired of the 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 black story film the the slave stories the the those type of like we we like it's enough of those films like why are we still making the same film about slavery? Uh, this and that and that and blacks ain't nothing and struggle this just struggle stories <laughs> um, right yeah either then what you know a lot of people criticize Tyler Perry <laughs> you know for, for for the relationship stuff and right it just seems like there's so much that they're just not happy <laughs> with as far as like black cinema whether whether it's poorly produced whether it's same old story and, same cast and blah 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 um for you what, what what do you think black cinema is in a good place today like as a whole like as far as like just if we just kind of look at the scope of black filmmaking like do you think it's in a good place right now me i'm still I'm actually learning about cinema in general and film in general just like just from being with the film some kind of learning it and just learning the bad things and just seeing things on a broader scale and what i'm hearing and learning that's like the best time is right now Mm. With everything, I feel like the best time for black cinema is right now with the with everything that we're going through, with the whole movement yeah. and everything. Everything right now is like all eyes is on us right now. Yeah. So you know saying? all eyes is on us. Anything we do, we be battling back and forth. You know, we're going through with this pandemic and everything like that. And I feel like this is the perfect time to do it because it's like right now, it's like if we have any other time to do it, the time would be right now. Yeah, that's good. Because I'm saying, and that's like, and, and sometimes I feel like a lot of times we, I was asking Morale with this, I'm like, you, I feel like a lot of times uh, the other, the others, they feel like it's, we feel like they, they feel like they owe us something now because like they, they see uh, finally like things, that things that's been happening for years is all, this, it's been recorded now and been to the vast. Yeah. So they, they, so people starting to feel it now and it's like, they feel like, we owe some things. It's like, if, if you want to take the advantage of doing anything, do it right now. Like Morale say, just green light yourself. You know what I'm saying? No, hold on, just green light yourself. Yeah. So if you want to get in the black cinema, you got something going on, just green light yourself, and it's the perfect time to do it. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, as far as you like touching on that, that the time that we're living in, obviously, you know, with 
protests, Black Lives Matter, mm-hmm. COVID, presidential elections, the, yeah. the world right now, like, I don't think, like, we realize, like, the death will be living in until, like, 20, 30 years from now, <laughs> when it's in the hit, it's, like, it's getting taught, like, in, in, in school, yeah, yeah exactly. like, like, damn, this, I this, lived in that time, like, yeah, holy this, this, one, this is gonna go down, this is gonna go down, crazy, yeah, this, this 2020 is gonna definitely go down in the book, for sure. This year has been Man, this year's been kicking everybody ass. <laughs> mm-hmm. It has, but the thing is, we and the ones that's that's still here, like I said, we gonna make it out. And that's how I look at it. It's like, man, we gonna make it out. We in the fourth quarter of the of the, of the year, man. We just all gonna make it out, regardless of everything we've been through. Um, the lives has been lost, rest their souls, man. The ones that still here, man, we gonna make it through. Like I said, we've been through a lot, but it's it's a lot that we got in us to keep going. Yeah, that's that's definitely true for sure. Uh, I got two more questions. I'm gonna finally let you go. I promise. <laughs> nah, nah, bro, we be cool, man. Go ahead. It's all fine, bro. I'm just going myself, man. Like I said, it's a good convo right here. Absolutely. That, that's how I like it to be. I don't like it to be too much like uh, interview, interviewer style because it's it's come it's too polished. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Just, you know, I got my bullet points, my notes, and stuff. I'm like, okay, boom. I want to talk about that. Talk about that. What I mean, just kind of like just. It just flows. And, and I'm saying you're real professional at that. Most people just go off the whim. Like, you got you. I, I like that, though. I like that. When you say, I'm like, okay, that's what's up. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I don't I like respect that. that. I respect that. Absolutely. That's how that's what the club talk, baby. That's how I like it. Yeah, hey, yeah. You cut differently. You cut differently, bro. You cut differently. Different club, man. <laughs> Absolutely. I appreciate that. All right. So, so coming off that, um, I do, damn, you, you said something that made me want to uh, touch on that, talk a little bit more about that in depth. Oh, the, uh, how, as far as like the, the financial aspect of the movie making game, when you talk about like that corporate entity, that, that big structure, that big umbrella, then it comes down to like the little guys, I guess like who will be us considered little guys. But what, what you were saying as far as about the beauty in it, something that's raw, rugged, just made from just, we're going to do it. We all going to pull together. It's our love. We're going to do that. What I find is that those type of uh, projects are the ones that, that get respected the most. They get so much respect because you can see the, the authenticity of it. Like when you watch it, it just kind of radiates like, damn, like this, like I feel that, <laughs> mm-hmm. like w- versus when you kind of looked at something that's it got so many hands in it, so many it's so polished, it's, it's all yeah. clean. It's all, yeah. I can't I can't even believe it. Like it's not believable. <laughs> like, do you think there will be a time where a lot of people will kind of shift their, um, I guess their movie ticket or their eyeballs to that kind of, you know what? we need to look more into independent filmmaking. But mm-hmm. big, you know, blockbuster films, yeah, of course they got big names in it. Oh, Denzel, The Rock, Kevin Hart, these guys, right. people, you're going to run to that. But hold up, what's that over there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's something important about that that I want to see. Do you think there will be a time where it'll kind of reverse, like those independent films will kind of like start to be those high, big ticket selling type of movies and it'll kind of like flip? I, I feel it. I feel that it does. I feel like that it will. Eventually, I feel that it will. It just gotta just the people who's writing and producing it and directing just gotta just really stand on the film. Like I so said, the big names out there. I'm saying the people gonna result to those big films. Like I so said, it's all yeah, polished. Yeah. And you start. And sometimes people want things new. I'm saying you want the new thing. We've been saying no disrespect to no actors. We've seen all those actors growing up yeah. over the years. <laughs> right. And sometimes we right. and sometimes you want something new and fresh. And you just gotta go. Just think about. I put it like this. Think about the um the rap industry or the music industry or whatever, you still got your, your big name, Def Jam and all that, but then you got these rappers who are independent that's making noise that people started going to and they and they stand their ground and they like, man, I'm in the same room as Rick Ross or in the same room as Jay-Z, but I'm doing it on my own for real. Exactly, exactly. I feel, I feel, like, I feel, like, it, I feel like it can I feel like it can do that and, then, and I feel like more so it will now, granted, because I don't know how things with this COVID, we may not even go back into a movie theater again. Man, like everything, I, I like, every, like everything, may be, uh, like everything, I, I miss the movie theater experience. Uh, like everything, like everything going on, we may miss, we may not even be back in the movie. Granted, I hope we do, but we may not be back in the theater. Everybody's streaming um, 
from your home, you got Amazon Prime, the Netflix, the Hulu, everything like that. And where you see more independent films being put on Netflix and all these other streaming platforms as well. So you can't do nothing. Like when you think about, you see the movie come out, come out on so-and-so and you gotta go to the theater to do it. That's not really happening anymore. When you can turn on Netflix, or Amazon Prime, it's something new popping up there every day. Yeah. And a lot of time it'd be independent films. So I feel like now is a good time. And it will be like that because you're starting to see more. I've seen a lot of films, but I haven't seen no actor. There was probably one actor I've seen it, but it wasn't big name acting. Like, this is a real good movie. Who shot this? Yeah, and it's like, yeah. it's been real independent. Like, okay, all right, okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It make you want to see more of their work. All right. I forgot how I came across this movie residue, actually. I'm trying to figure out how to find it because obviously it's an independent film. It's not... Well, like you got to kind of like look for it a little bit like or somebody mm -hmm. tell you about it like oh you seen this movie resident oh yo, let me put you on or like you just kind of stumble across it like you just kind of scrolling through netflix or hulu whatever platform is on you just kind of like oh look at the cover you just click on it but you kind of got to like dig for it a little bit mm -hmm, yeah like, how, how did i come, come across this movie i think i seen i, I think i probably maybe seen a, a trailer for it or something and the trailer kind of caught my eye and I was like, oh, okay, let me check this out. Cause I like independent movies anyway. I'm starting to get away from the, those, it, it, it doesn't do anything for me, those big movies no more. Yeah. Just, I need, I need to be spoken to. I need a, I need something to touch me. <laughs> right. Exactly. I need, something exactly. I, can relate to. I, I, need, exactly. I need a little bit of realism. Like, I, you know, like the, the love story was big. Ah, I'm good. <laughs> Let, let let me get something that's like on the foots and ground. <laughs> so I seen it and I clicked on it and I watched it. I was like, oh man. I was like, this is dope, man. So during the credits, because you don't see the title of the movie and nothing till the end of the movie. <laughs> oh, because like, the end of the trailer, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, what is this? Like, oh, okay, it's called Residue. So you know, you watch it and you look at it. I was like, oh man, I want to reach out to this guy. <laughs> So I wrote your name down, you know, when they showed the credits. I was like, what's his name? Dennis. Okay, Dennis, you got it. <laughs> I was like, so I started looking, like, boom, down. Like, you know, Facebook? I couldn't find you on Facebook. I'm not sure if you got a Facebook, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> I had one. It's, it's, it hasn't been used for a while. Oh, okay, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it, it, wasn't even, it wasn't even be under my real name. So. Oh, okay. So I was like, damn, no Facebook. Like, Let me try IG. Boom. I was like, okay, there he is. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, okay, Lindsay Love. And I was like, you know what? Let me shoot him a message, see if I can talk with him about this this film and, and chat with him about, you know, his story, his life and stuff like that. So that, that's beautiful, man. Um, now I appreciate that for you finding the film, watching yeah, it, yeah. and reaching out to me. I don't understand that guy. I said, oh, man, that's what I'm saying. I appreciated that, bro. Oh, man. Well, I'm, definitely, I'm, man. Okay, I'm glad I could do that for you, man. Because I, I, I had the impression that He's probably either uh, busy, probably uh, maybe too big to respond <laughs> at this point since, <laughs> since the film been released. Cause you never know. You like some people want once you know they they hit something and they they out of here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it do. They, they ain't got time for nobody. Like we out here. Like man, this film that got released, we ninety six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. What? Like, Responded yeah. to the DM. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it honest with you. When we came back from Italy. I was like, man, I just need. You think I want to go out to work on Monday? I do not. <laughs> you think I do? But I know, like, man, I just feel like I just took the chance and everything was still like, man, it ain't gonna happen. Just like God, it's gonna be like not yet. I got you, but just not yet. Everything yeah. is just be slow walking. This is just something I would never expect to just getting myself into. Yeah. So. And I'm saying I enjoy it. I like it. I would love to do it. Like I've got people who I'm saying just friends have sent me scripts just to read, not to be in wow. film, but just like read. Like man, how you feel about this? I never in my life. Yeah. And so I'm I'm like, I, I enjoy it. And, <laughs> and then me, Marawi, and the other uh, actor Obena, the dude to play Jay, we all have a group chat, and we do we call it cinema study, where he cinema. we sit down, we he tell us what what films to watch and pay attention to the actors and different things. So I'm kind of like the lessons I'm learning just from being around different people and just after the film and all that. So I definitely do enjoy it. That's dope, man. So so for you personally, do do you kind of see yourself like in the future, like either um, directing or writing or doing something involved with them? More acting obviously is coming. Do you see yourself doing that more in that kind of area? I'm... Uh, <laughs> it's funny you asking that because I've been working on this, been procrastinating and working on this stuff. 
I've been working on this book for about a good ten years, and it's a 10 book. Years, woo! I've been, I've been, I've been playing around with myself, <laughs> man. It's, it's been putting the pen down and putting a lot like I, because I, 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 I battle with just not liking how I put it down on paper. Now, if I would have somebody sit down and talk to me, and they put in it, I would love that. You can sit down and talk to me all day, and you put in your words. I would love that, but I definitely want to get into writing more. And being with Marawi, he's kind of like motivate me put the press like bro just saying don't matter how it come out just put it down there it's your story mm -hmm. and i'm actually talking i got a, a author uh a, a, a buddy of mine he's from philly matter of fact hey. and he, got, he wrote he wrote he writes children books or whatever and um oh, nice yeah he he uh me and him talked it up and i was talking to him about this but he's like man write it, it's your story so i definitely want to get into more writing acting for sure like i said i want to definitely challenge myself Good. Um, and then all that in one going directing. Like I said, now I wish I was on set the days I wasn't just yeah. to be around and learn a lot more. Yeah. But now I'm, I'm, I'm trying to grasp with everything now. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Can you, can you, without giving too much, can you give us a little bit about what the book is about? You know, just, you know um, I'm giving away the whole thing. Bit. Like I say, I can't give you no, no due date or nothing. I just know it's going to get done. But yeah. um, it's basically about my. It was, like I said, I thought about this in 2009, so it was basically like how my college experience was at the HBCU. Uh, I went to Florida a &M, a m University. Um, just the guy from, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. Happy birthday, fam. You today, they birthday. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, That's, nice. Yeah, happy birthday. So <laughs> um, went there and uh, just how it was. You go there for college, but all other things happen that don't, isn't college related. Mm -hmm. You think about just this so many things that went on that people who was down there from DC. We had a club called DC Metro Club with people from DC, Merlin, and Virginia, where we all connected and bonded because we states hours away from our home. So we had to yeah. have a have a had a tight knit family down there that we all it's so people who was doing that time. Um so there so much went on, so much that went down. It's like this happened in college, like yeah, it's like <laughs> a lot of things that wasn't for the happen happened in college, but just not the bad things, just the, the struggles. Just, I'm saying, how are you going to pay for this class this time? You go to financial aid to take you to admissions. Uh, go back there. Like, I just I just left there. They just told me, come over here. And yeah. You said, I got to go back over there and send that long line again. Uh, and just going through that and just dealing with the your back home mess and then just love triangles here. And just what I've seen from my eyes in college and the people who was there, they were like, oh, yeah. Like, people who was in that town, they were like, oh, yeah, right there. Because... It's like you had to be that type of moment. It's like one of them, like you had to have been that type of moments. And I just kind of yeah. like I want always expressing it, put it out on paper. Yeah, man. Well, I hope you finish the damn thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm motivated, bro. I'm, I'm motivated now, man. People, uh, more people been asking me about it. I'm, I'm definitely motivated now. I've been, I've been really thinking about it critically. So yeah, it's, it's, it's going to get done for sure. Yeah, please finish that. We need that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. You, got, you definitely got to capitalize on this moment. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. You're right, for sure. Yeah, the 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 the, the steamboat is rolling. Like, oh, let me let me hop on it while it's there. <laughs> ah, let me get all that real quick. Like, oh, you like that? Well, you like right like this too. <laughs> like this too. Right, 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 right. That's why it's hot. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. One more question about the film, and mm -hmm. this time I'm gonna let you go. <laughs> nah, she's good, bro. We good. You know, we, we cool, man. We vibing out, bro. Ah, oh, man. Okay. So in this film, uh, it, well, for you, do you have a, a favorite scene in a movie? My favorite scene, actually, in a movie is when Jay go visits Dion in jail. That's man. That's beautiful. That's, that's probably my favorite scene because. If for uh, people who have haven't seen the film, because yeah. morale we didn't want to have the average like hand on the glass or fist pounding on the glass in yeah. jail scene. It's like when you talk to somebody, because I'm saying I've visited people in jail before. Mm -hmm. you know I'm saying so when you talk to somebody, you 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 bonding with people, but you don't want to be in that set and you want to be out, be able to touch them, be able to feel them, laugh and joke with them. And so that part is my favorite part because. Just understand that too. You don't want to be in jail. Also, just the acting and what Obana did. And like I, I he tip or he make me tip every time. I'm like, dang. Like I, yeah, I feel his yeah, acting yeah. in that one. So I feel like that's probably my personal favorite part for real. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's a great scene. I think, and I think that that's an important scene as well because, um, if if anyone who's listening or watching, and some people may have like a loved one or a close, you know, person to them in their life, that's probably you know, they sitting down for a little bit, you know, you, you go see them and, 
you, you know, you want to show them love. You want them to be at home, but you obviously can't. And I like how the scene kept going back and forth with them sitting in the yeah. car and then reflecting them, like, just out, like, in, in like, a... Like a the, woods. the woods, where they, where they yeah. used to go at when they was younger, yeah. yeah. This is, like, a place I, they used to, it was comfortable being at when they were younger, yeah. Yeah, I like how it kind of kept bringing it back, like, you can kind of... But it was showing them in adult form, and... Mm -hmm. It wasn't like them little, as little kids. It kind of like yo, like this is where we would be if we was having this conversation <laughs> exactly. right now. Exactly. <laughs> like yo, this, this is our spot, yo. And then they, you know, start play fighting the slap boxing, and it's like, damn, like you missed that. Like this is my big bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah man. That, that's an important scene because I think a lot of us don't get to, like I said, to see that, especially in film. You know, like you like you experience it, you may live it like that's your everyday life, but when you kind of see it on film, it's like, damn, I just I just seen my man the other day. Like, she's man, that that makes me kind of like think about that. Or think about my father, or like yeah. like even like my mother. I remember, man, this is like I never said this on the podcast before, but when I was younger, growing up in the projects in Philly, my mom went away for to jail twice. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, like for um, possession of marijuana or whatever, you know, and she, she went away for a little bit two times and that just kind of like, man, like made me think about that, like, shh, man, you know, like obviously she's home now and stuff, man. Mm -hmm. It just kind of took me back there, like I went yeah. to, like, I went, like my mom was gone. <laughs> no, nobody was there. I have an older sister. Nobody was there for me and my sister. Dude, we had to live with, with, uh, people in the projects like wow. not even our like our family like these are just like people that just like no oh yeah those that's nadine kids when i was nadine like, uh -huh. dumb nadine kids where her family at we don't know <laughs> well and they would just take us in and like we take that in. that's love and that's that that's crazy that love. stuff man crazy so like it's just like kind of like seeing these stories you know, they're, they're so relatable, and I think it needs to be more and more and more of them. Yeah. These fairy tale stories, these fantasy stories, it's, it's just not real life. You know, like I wish, <laughs> that's what I was talking about earlier. Like I wish it would flip, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what, not one thing I do love and I respect morality on this film uh, is because this wasn't your average drugs and violence. You know what I'm saying? When you think about them, it could easily been DC, that story. them DC, they think about, yeah, the whole. You think when somebody's shooting, think about oh the murder capital or the president or this and this. You think about DC or just the drugs or everything that bad that happened. But this was actually like a story that should be told and needed to be told. Absolutely. That's like I like the way he changed. It's like and it's like an actual story about DC where it's not just about DC, but every like you say you can relate to it. Everybody else can relate to it as well. Yeah. It just happened to be DC was just a platform for one of these for one of many stories to be told about it. Yeah, absolutely. This is a sidebar question. Is DC really expensive as people say it is, like as far as the cost of living? Is that it's getting there? It's getting there for sure. Now, I'll be honest, with you, I feel like once I feel like it, it was it was getting there, but it's starting to get expensive. But I feel like a lot of I think once I, I may be lying, but this is my personal feel. I feel like once Obama got was the president, I feel like people came for inauguration. And just stay, like didn't go back home. Oh people just, shit! Yeah, I feel like people when they came when 2008 came when they came for inauguration for first black president, I think people just transferred their life over here, just stayed, <laughs> and then just the rebuilding it. So it's it's definitely starting to get hella expensive up in, in DC. Yeah, hella. Yes, cool. what, what's the the atmosphere like now out there, uh, as far as you know, with election and stuff and all that going on and whatnot? Being that that's the capital, is there what's the the vibe of the city right now? Like how how is how is it out there as far as you know what everything's going on with election and stuff like that? Um, I would say any other thing is eerie because we know who who we got in in, in office. Like we know it's like uh, but just we stand like I said, we standing now, we stand in front because we know how important it is. Like I said, everybody out there and vote. We definitely know how important it is to vote. We got Black Lives Matter right heading towards the white house so that was a yeah. huge thing but it's like now it's like it's like it's 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 more so of a sensitive side but it's more so of what it's like i right, we know what we have to do now as well too like actually today uh in dc about 5 30 um we you know how california had uh coachella well we oh, got yeah. one 
we got one called Motella in DC because we oh, say Mo right. and Motella is like Motella started because um it's one one course one corner store not too far from Howard University plays go-go music. Go goes DC music, go plays go go music Amazing. all the time, 24-7. So when the gentrifiers come in, moving in and complaining about the noise and wanted to shut the store down. Uh, I think that's what everybody from the city was like, mm -mm, you y'all can come in and take the property, but y'all can't tell us how to stop playing our music. When that store been playing music, go go music since I was little. I'm 32 yeah, years old. So it's been playing music blasting outside the blasting outside the street for years. So when they wanted to stop that, everybody from DC just came together and was like, nah, y'all y'all not gonna mute DC. You can't mute DC. So the that's when we came up with the hashtag don't mute DC. Mm -hmm. and it's like they having a big concert. They just rally the streets of DC, just playing music, just having fun, yeah. enjoying themselves. Go go man, performing and played and stuff like that. So yeah. the atmosphere is like this. Just that alone is like we we taking over now. Like we we got it now, but we got to understand it's what we got to do. Just with just voting. Yeah. And just don't don't worry about it. you can't just think about the president either. You gotta go to some ANC commissioners, some council member meetings. That's what really started with us. A lot of people really yeah. understand. And just just going to them meetings and really putting the press on your council members and ward members, not putting the press, but just saying they can work with y'all. Just make sure they do their job correctly because we gotta do ours as well too. That's as much as much as people want Trump out the office like I do, we gotta make sure we hold Biden accountable as well too and Kamala Harris. That's exactly. That's exactly right. Like I, I don't. I, I just hate the people who like just sell their vote for for less. Like yeah, just like vote. Like don't no, okay. You want <laughs> Trump out, but then just like all right, what else? Yeah. Like you gotta make sure that bad you come in, man. Just make sure you look out for us. Make sure you you do what you say you're gonna do. Exactly. That's exactly right. Um. What are your thoughts on your DC Zone Wale? Do y'all show Wale love out there? I don't feel like he <laughs> love, man. Y'all y'all don't love y'all don't show the love that he deserves, man. <laughs> Why Wale put DC on the map, man? Far as far as music musically, far as a superstar coming from DC, can, can we name a, a a superstar from DC musically before Wale? I don't think we can. As far as I know, um, Marvin <laughs> Marvin Gaye. Well, I'm talking about hip hop. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <I'm gay. laughs> but um, no, I think in the hip hop realm, Wale. I don't show him say, love, man. People, re people, re like I said, I don't personally know the brother. I never met him before. I probably he came down fam you for like a concert when he was on his first little wave. Oh, of course, he came with the whole Nike Boost song. Yeah, um, I respect the brother for sure. Never really met him. Never really been around to get the energy. I really. I really don't know why people don't like them. I don't know if it's, you know, people, it's like, so weird. I guess people, it's like people who know him, really like, oh, he ain't from DC, you know, that whole turf. It's like, it's a whole territory thing for real, for real. I don't know exactly where he's from. Oh, he said, okay. people, I know he'd say he's from running, but if he put on for the city, he's much respect to him. Yeah. He opens the doors for other artists and all that. Yeah. But, um, I always just wonder, like, it's just so funny, like, <laughs> like DC because they never, just, never claim this man. <laughs> They're saying that people who, and I have heard people who say they've been around him, like, oh, they, they not, might, may not be as of his liking or may not take a liking to him because of may how he be. I've never been around, so I don't know how he is. But then I guess the whole point of, you ever from D.C., but you're not even from D.C., you from this, and it's like that whole territory yeah. thing. It's not really worth it anymore, for real, for real. Yeah, it just becomes a, a circus act after that. Like, all right, yeah, what are we like arguing now? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He putting on, he putting on for us, so. Yeah, what are we arguing about? <laughs> That's dope, man. Well, I think I've asked you everything on this paper I had, literally, and some more. <laughs> okay, those cool, man. Cool. Let me make sure. Let me make sure I hit off before we wrap it up. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, man. I think I hit it off. I got it. That's good. That's good. It was cool, man. Any other thing? It was cool. It was a good vibe, man. Absolutely, Enjoy man. Enjoy the question. Enjoy the combos, man. Yeah, like we we hit most of this stuff. I, I wrote down just. Like just talking, it just kind of just just hit all the stuff. <laughs> so that's mm -hmm. great, man. Um, before we get up out of here, let the people know where they can find you, connect with you at, where they can watch the film, all that good stuff. Go ahead and plug away. <laughs> uh, my, my Instagram, I believe, if I haven't changed it, it's the original Debonair. Um, I believe that's still the same thing on Twitter. I'm Debonair Lindsay, D E B O N A I R. Lindsay is the L E N Z Y because I play with my last name a little bit. <laughs> um, um, and you catch the residue on Netflix right now. Make sure you uh, you search it in the, in the bar. Make sure you like it too. Just don't watch it, man. Make the hit that thumbs yeah, up button. Yeah, hit the thumbs up button. Yeah, let, let, let's run it up, man. We gotta run it up. 
if you, if you can, man, make sure you get on IMBD and, and write your reviews because that's that was another thing too. We see how Rotten Tomatoes had Yo, the ninety. Oh, I IMDb you, I missed the, that. Yeah, that was crazy. I did see that. That was weird. I'm glad you brought that up. On Rotten Tomatoes, the uh, rating ninety six percent high as crap. High as I was like, okay, then you hit over the IMDb. It's like, <laughs> I think yeah, exactly. it's like five point something. I'm like, what the. I feel like the people fellas that we ruffled, that's why they made Fred Council was giving it one. one <laughs> I feel like that's that's what we came to. We was like it's just not it's like it's, you that's read all the other you read all the other reviews from other articles too. Rolling Stones wrote about us, the New Yorker wrote about us, yeah. LA Times wrote about us. That's um just amazing. everything just showed us love. And it's like I right, boo, but how come I'm be yeah. here? Like it's not really I'm saying the algorithm there is not equal enough for real. Yes. So if y'all can't make sure y'all go, y'all go vote <laughs> right with you for it. All right. See, like we were talking about earlier, the hate and the criticism for no it's, reason. It, it's <laughs> no reason at all. Like they're like, why? Like, why can't y'all just let us live, man? Like, god damn, this is the only peace we got. <laughs> Get y'all right. just let us live. Like, god damn. <laughs> but yeah, just catch me on the original Debonair, the original Debonair on IG and Debonair Lindsay on um Twitter. Lindsay L E N Z Y. It is dope. Make sure y'all go ahead and check out that film. Um, also, shout out to our sponsor for today's episode. Once again, theflyeragency.com. If you need any artwork, logos, website designs, graphics, any of that, make sure you go to theflyeragency.com. Uh, yeah. Uh, come back again for another episode of Claw Talk Podcast where my guest will be. I don't know yet. <laughs> so that's why you should hit that subscribe rate and review button so that way you don't miss more great episodes like this uh and we'll see you next time goodbye